Hey YouTube, Josh here with Tipsy Python, your casual guide to learning how to program with Python, and I'm back with another video. In today's video, I got a couple goals for us. First off, I want to introduce you to the concept object-oriented programming, and we'll discuss how to implement classes in Python. And secondly, we'll write a couple classes to be used in a whiskey collection app. And in today's video, I'm featuring Woodford Double Oaked. Now look guys, I think the standard Woodford is just fine, but Double Oaked is something special. I mean, come on, Double Oaked, put in the barrel aged taken out of the barrel put in another barrel like it has to be good in full disclosure here i am very partial to this bourbon so take my recommendation with a grain of salt would you look at the color on that whiskey okay look guys there are four major characteristics of object-oriented programming languages you have encapsulation polymorphism inheritance and data abstraction now i'm not lying i'm just not being serious right now either object-oriented programming is this huge topic i mean there are videos and there are classes and there are books like there is all sorts of material on it way more than i could discuss in a single video and i'm not advocating that you should become an expert on oop just because i think it's cool if you are serious about programming and you're going down the software engineering route then in time object-oriented programming is going to become important for you and on the other hand if you're just trying to write a few scripts and automate things on your machine you don't necessarily have to use it either it's completely optional but look here's my belief as a beginner, object-oriented programming is a very different paradigm. If you're still learning basic concepts in programming, you should focus there first. But I do think that object-oriented programming is very popular, and I think that the sooner that you expose yourself to these ideas and the sooner that you start understanding it, the faster you're going to grow as a developer yourself. The only thing I'm diving into today is this whiskey right here. But let's take our toe and dip it into object-oriented programming just a little bit. Now in a very simplified form, object-oriented programming is an approach to programming that says we can solve our problems by programming using objects. And as we write code, we implement objects by writing classes. So let's start talking about classes. My opinion is that the best way to start learning about classes is to dive into the Python documentation, so let's take a look there. And this first sentence right here sums up one of the most basic explanations I can give. Classes provide a means of bundling data and functionality together. Now putting this in context with the programming we've been doing, we've been creating data like lists and integers and strings. And we've also been creating some logic and modularizing it as functions. And a class is an object definition that gives us a logical way to group these two things together. And you know how I like to do things. Let's just dive on in, give that old tipsy Python try. Get your computers ready, get your drinks ready. I'm going straight into Jupiter. Let's just dive on in and create our first class. It's going to start with the keyword class, then a class name like uh, my first class, a colon, followed by an indented block with some logic. Now, if you've watched my past videos, you know how to define functions. This syntax should be pretty comprehensible. Instead of using the def keyword, we're using class. We have a class name. And as of right now, we have no parentheses right here, just a colon and then the definition that follows. One significant thing about the class syntax that you'll see is how the class is named. I'm using this uppercase camel casing where the first letter of each word is uppercase instead of using all lowercase and underscores like I typically do. You see this a lot in other programming languages like Java, but this is one of the few places you see it recommended to be used in Python. Now guys, look, I can't even pretend that this class makes sense. I just wanted to give you an example of the syntax. I said earlier that a class is supposed to be a logical way to group data and functionality, and we ain't even doing that. And that's why right now, you're about to write your second class. Let's make a whiskey class. I'm gonna use the class keyword. Uh, my class name is whiskey, the colon. And let's start by initializing some data. I'm gonna say volume equals 750. Now we use classes by making instances of the class, and we instantiate the class like this. I'm going to start with a variable named w, and set it equal to my class name whiskey, with a set of parentheses at the end. Now that I've instantiated the class, I can reference attributes about it with a dot notation like this, w.volume. The real call out here is that I'm calling my class, and it returns an instance of the class. Now I think one of the best ways I can try to make this make sense is by looking at the type function again. I can take the type of something, like string, and we'll see that string itself is a type. I can then take the type of something like ABC, and we see that this is of type string. What I'm trying to say here is that there's a relationship between classes and objects. A class is a type of object, 
and an object is an instance of a class. Contextualizing this with what we just did, I'm going to take the type of whiskey. We see that whiskey is a type. And then I'm going to take a type of W, the instance of whiskey. We see that W here is of type. Uh, main just means the current module that we're working in. And then whiskey is a class that we defined in this module. Now that we've explained a little bit about how classes our definitions of objects. And we've got at the data piece a little bit, but we haven't talked about the logic. How do we build functionality into a class? I'm going to keep going with my example. I'm going to take this class. Let's reuse it. Now inside my class definition here, I can have multiple lines of indented code. And one of the things that I can do in here is define special types of functions that are related to the class. These are called methods. To define a method, I use the def keyword like a function. I do the method name like print info followed by parentheses. An important note here is that methods require a first argument that we refer to as self. Then I'm going to use a colon followed by another indented block with our actual logic in it. Let's just observe how this works. Now I'm going to instantiate this class into a variable called w. And as you remember earlier, I can use dot notation to refer to attributes of the class. This is actually the same with methods. I'm going to use dot notation to call the print info method. OK, that wasn't so bad, was it? Let's just talk through what's happening here real quick. In the class, we define a type of object called whiskey. When we instantiate the object, it retains all the attributes that we assign to the class. When we write a method, the reason that we use the self keyword is because we're not referring to the class. We're referring to the instance itself that's being called. So when we instantiate a class, and call the print info method, we're not going back to the class. The method is looking at this particular instance of the object to get the data that it needs, volume. You see what I mean? It gets a little dicey, right? Hopefully you're keeping up so far. I promise with practice this will make more sense. One thing that we need to reconcile though is that a class is a definition for some type of object. It's a blueprint for this type of object. And in the case of whiskey, we assign an attribute called volume 750, but not all bottles are 750s. I mean, you got 350s and 100s and 50 milliliters and, and the 1.75s. How do we adjust for something like this in the code? Just looking at what we have so far, wouldn't it be nice if when we called the whiskey class, we could pass an argument to adjust for something like volume. And we can, my friends, let's do it now. I'm gonna copy what we have for whiskey. We'll keep working on this. Now, while there are class attributes that are the same for all instances of class, this just isn't a good one. So a better one might be something like regulated true, all whiskey is regulated. It's also important to note that these class attributes are completely optional. We don't need them because we can set instance attributes. To do this, we're gonna write a special method named double underscore init double underscore. Like the other method we wrote, it requires the self parameter, but it also accepts arguments that will be taken when the class is instantiated. For instance, volume. Then we're gonna set self.volume equal to the volume that's passed in here. Now these double underscore methods, there's a few of them. Uh, they're also called dunder methods or magic methods. Init is a special initialization method that's called immediately after an instance is created, these steps are run. And it works like this. When we create a new instance of the whiskey method, it now accepts the parameters that we specified in the initialization method. Now our variable w is pointing to an instance of the whiskey class that has an attribute called volume that was set to 700. And to prove it, we're gonna call our print info method. Like functions, classes can accept zero or more parameters through the initialization method. And they can be any data type. They can be strings or lists or integers. If I was actually going to write a whiskey class, I'd probably need a little more information than this, like the name of the whiskey. Let's code that up here. If I was truly writing a meaningful class, I wouldn't have this class attribute in here. I would accept an argument named brand so I could tell what type of whiskey it was. I needed to set an attribute called brand on the instance of the object. And then in print info, I'd give a little more detail about it. Now that our whiskey class is looking a little bit better, let's leverage the real power of the class, that it's a blueprint and that we can create multiple objects based on this single definition. To make some object instances as we go, I'm actually going to make a whiskey list. Then I'll instantiate an object of type whiskey. This is gonna be, uh, how about some Woodford? It's gonna be a 750. And I'm gonna append it to my whiskey list. 
Now running this exact same code again, doesn't matter that I'm overriding the variable. We have that instance of the class in our list. I'm gonna write a makers object, and uh, this one I just did the 375. Now that we're collecting these objects, let's see what we got. For w and whiskey list, we're gonna call the print info method of each object in here. Now guys, I hope this is starting to make more sense. This is just one way that we can use classes as an object definition to avoid repeating code. Now I'm thinking for today's exercise, let's write a brand new whiskey collection app. And let's also write a couple classes that'll help us manage the bottles in the collection. Just to get some basic requirements for us, I'm thinking that the user should be able to track the bottles in their collection, they should be able to add bottles to the collection, and then furthermore, they should be able to keep track of the volume as they uh, sip off of these bottles. First, a dabble do me. I'm just going to go to my desktop and create a brand new file. Call this one collection.py. I'm going to edit with Sublime like I like to do for my scripts. Okay, start with a shebang user bin in Python 3. Now thinking about the requirements I stated a second ago, I can think of a couple objects that we'll need. The first one, uh, conveniently being something we already wrote, is the whiskey object. I'm gonna grab this out of Jupyter, paste it into my script. But a print info isn't gonna do me very much good. Now I was saying that we need to be able to keep track of what gets poured, how much is in the bottle still. So I'm actually gonna write a pour method. I'm thinking when we call this method, we'll need to specify how much we poured. So I'll say pour volume will get passed in. And then we'll need to remove this volume from the actual volume that we're holding in here. So our instance will have an attribute called volume. I'll just use minus equals pour volume to remove it. Let's make sure this works. W equals an instance of the whiskey class named Mictors10. Volume of my mixers is 750. Just to make sure that works, I'm going to print w.volume. It is 750. Now let me call the pour method. I'm going to say I had a 25 milliliter pour, and then I'll reprint the volume. Nice, so it was instantiated at 750, and we took 25 off of it with the pour method. Now this will satisfy the requirement for keeping track of the volume of each bottle, but how do I keep track of multiple bottles? Let's write another class to do that for us. I'm gonna write a collection class. Now all instances of this class are gonna have an attribute called bottles, which I think I'm gonna make a dictionary. And I want this app to be able to save state between sessions. So how about when we instantiate the collection, we pass it a file where we want to save the data to. I'm gonna write an initialization method, except self as all methods do, and then it's gonna take a file name. And I'll just set this to an instance attribute called file name. Okay, actually getting my collection working, uh, one method that I might want to add on here is an add method. This method will accept an instance of the whiskey class, and then we're going to add it to this dictionary. So key value pairs, uh, I'm going to set self.bottles. The key is going to be the brand of the whiskey. I'm passing an instance of whiskey into this method. I need to access the brand attribute bottle.brand, and that's going to be equal to the object itself. Another method I might want is to be able to show everything in my collection to the user. Print listing collection contents. And then for a key value and self.bottles, we want to look at this dictionary and get the items out of it. I'm going to print some information about it here. Start with the key, that's the bottle name, and then I'll display how much is remaining in it. Now remember, the value here is referring to items inside of bottles, which are instances of the whiskey object. I'm gonna use dot notation to refer to the volume of the object. Okay, cool, and this may be enough for us to get started playing around with the object. So I'm gonna say wc is a variable whiskey collection equals an instance of the collection class, collection class, takes a parameter called file name. I'm not doing anything with it yet, so I'm just gonna use a none. And then uh, let's call the show method to see what's in there. All right, we hit the show method. This line was printed. And there was nothing in the bottles dictionary yet, so nothing happened after that. But it wouldn't be very exciting if there's nothing in our collection, so let's add some bottles. I'm gonna make an instance of whiskey. It's mixtures 10. 
And then I'm going to call the add method to add this bottle. I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to say makers, also 750, and we're going to add it to the collection. Let's see what happens. Cool, so two instances of the whiskey class were passed into collection. We're storing them here now. Let's just check out this one last piece of functionality. So I want to reference a particular bottle in my collection uh, called Makers, and I want to imbib a little bit on it. So I'm going to pour 10 milliliters. I'm doing this before the show method. You'll see we started at 750 and now we're down to 740. So it's accurately tracking the volume. All right, my objects are looking pretty good so far. The one last thing I do want to address is storing the state of the data. I want to dump everything from my collection into a file so that I can read it the next time the app starts up. Let's make a couple more methods to help us out. I'll make one called save. First thing we're gonna do in save is create an empty save list. Now inside of save list, we'll append everything that we want stored to the data file. I'm gonna say for whiskey and self.bottles.values save list.append. I'm gonna put a dictionary in here. I'm gonna use a key named brand to reference whiskey.brand and a key named volume to reference the volume. Now to save my object to text, I'm actually gonna save it as JSON, so I'm gonna import JSON up here. Then I'm gonna say save text equals json.dumps my save list. I'm gonna dump it out to text. And then we just got saved to a file. So with open, the file name was passed into our class when it was instantiated. So we have a instance attribute here we can use for the file name. In write mode as F, we're gonna write our JSON object out. I'm gonna do one more to populate this object from the file. So def populate, also taking self. We're gonna open the same data file in read mode as F. And the data is going to equal uh, json.loads, load it from the text into an object, what we read from the file. Now at this point in the code, we have the data, but we don't have the object. So how do we turn this into objects? Let's create some instances. For item and data, I'm gonna reference this self bottles dictionary. I'm gonna set the key equal to each item in the brand, and the value is gonna be an instance of the whiskey class. Now again, the whiskey class takes two parameters. We need brand and volume. We can get those out of the data also. Item brand and item volume. And I think I got everything in there. We don't want another new line character fiasco. I'm gonna comment out these lines and let's actually start writing the app code. To make our lives easier, I already skeleton framed up our application. Another while true loop, we're gonna have some inputs. Do you wanna view bottles, add a bottle, have a port or exit? Most of our conditions still need to be coded, but the exit already is coded to exit the loop. Now I do need to specify a file name to use. So I'll put one here. Let's just call it collection.dat. And before I forget, on my desktop, I'm gonna create this file, collection.dat. And inside of it, I'm just gonna initialize this file with an empty list. And just to be clear here, this is a string right now. This is a text file, but we're using JSON. We're gonna load this into a list. So walking through this app from the top, we import JSON, we define a class, we define a collection, we define a couple constants. I'm gonna create an instance of the collection class, passing in file name. And I wanna populate it if something's already in that data file. Now on app start, our collection should be populated. Let's go to these options. In the view option, all we really need to do is call this method, the show method from the collection class, which we can access through the instance. So if view whiskey collection dot show, let me test this out and make sure that it works. I'm gonna use the view option and we called the show method, but there's nothing in there yet. Looking good so far. In the event that we wanna add a bottle, we need to get some more user input. Brand, I'm gonna prompt the user, what is the brand? And we need a volume two. I'm gonna ask for another input. How many milliliters are in the bottle? And remember, input returns a string, but when we instantiate the whiskey class, we need an integer in here. So I'm gonna cast this for us. I'll actually use a float. Then we'll make an instance of the whiskey class 
passing brand and volume. And finally, I'm gonna add this to the collection. And this way really may be more comprehensible, but we don't use this temporary variable very long, so I'm just gonna cut it out all together, pass the class instance directly in here. Now let me try testing and adding a bottle, making sure that works. Add Woodford, bottles of 750. Now view. I'm listing out my collection here. All right, one more option to code. We need to have a pour. Some might consider this the best part of the app. Now we need to again get some input from the user. Uh, first thing that I want to know is the pour size. I'm going to prompt how big was the pour. And again, we're working with math, so I want to convert this to a float. And I put the cart ahead of the horse here. I actually need to know which bottle first we're using. Input what bottle are you having? And then now we hit the pour method of the selected bottle. So referencing whiskey collection that holds our collection of bottles. And this dictionary, I'm gonna reference the bottle name that the user input. That's the key, the value is the whiskey itself. I'm gonna hit the pour method on the whiskey. We're gonna pass in the pour size. Then as it decreases, I'm actually gonna hit the save method on the collection itself so we save state of the app. And speaking of saving data, I never actually refactored add bottle to save the state of the app. I'm gonna do that here, self.save. All right, we should be in pretty good shape. Let's test this app and see where we're at. Let's view what we have, nothing in there. Because I forgot to call the save method earlier, that should be resolved now. I'm gonna add a bottle called uh, Pappy 15. It's a 750. I'm gonna view my collection, I have Pappy in there. I'm gonna have a pour. What bottle am I having? The Pappy 15. I like to chug my Pappy, I'm having 100 milliliters of it. Let's view the collection again, and we'll see indeed the volume of the Pappy has decreased. I don't want to steer you guys wrong, so I'm going to close this out. Let's reopen it one more time just to view. We'll see that we are saving state. All right, now that wasn't so bad, was it? We have a functional app here, and one of the things that really works for us with classes is we have these modular pieces of code, so we can reference it many places throughout our script, and if we ever need to update it or we want to write tests for it, we do that in one place. But all this talk of whiskey is making me thirsty. Let's talk about this Woodford Double Oak a little bit. At 90.4 proof, it has a really gorgeous nose on it, like cherry and cinnamon, and then taking it to the palate. It's sweet caramel and brown sugar all the way through. And it's just a little bit like this herbal eucalyptus thing going on at the top of my mouth. And then on the sides of my tongue, I have that oak bite. You can definitely tell this was double barreled. And it finishes on a buttery popcorn note. Super good end to end. Woodford Double Oak is one that I keep in my cabinet at all times. All right, everyone, that's all the content for today's video. If you enjoy this type of content, I really kindly ask you to consider subscribing to my channel. If you're interested in seeing the source code for today's video, I'm gonna be putting a link in the description below to my GitHub. And as always, friends, until next time, Tipsy Python.